So given that this is a rare disease, uh, individuals like myself that want to study this disease are commonly limited by small numbers. And ultimately, as a center even as big as Indiana University, we only have outreach to maybe the state. Um, but in the state, how many autoimmune hepatitis patients are there? We don't actually know. We do know if you look at the point prevalence of this disease, it's probably between one and two per 100,000 people. Extrapolate this to the United States population, and we're talking probably close to 80,000 cases that exist. I guarantee most of those people don't know about it. However, with the advent of computer and internet now, we actually can reach out to, to try to recruit patients to be involved. And I think what we've learned is patients with this disease realize there are shortcomings. There is poor caregiver expertise just because of limited exposure. Um, there's no good information except for outlets like yours or, or, or people that put it out that are trusted. Um, and then ultimately there's no way to really invest in the disease and try to provide for research. So using the Autoimmune Hepatitis Research Network we actually fulfill all of these aims. Uh, we've been able to recruit patients for genetic but also environmental or epidemiology studies. Uh, these are patients we would have never met before. Using this media also, we were actually able to form what is called the Autoimmune Hepatitis Association. This AIHA is what we've called it. We had our first national meeting three weeks ago, and we had over 150 patients from all over the United States and Canada descend on Indiana University. What is the great part of having a physical support conference as well? Not only can we cater to those individuals by having direct provider patient interaction, but we have dedicated topics of discussion as well you know, through conference presentation. Also, we were able to collect biospecimens. So blood in the lobby uh, was a great way that we were able to get uh, DNA for our studies. Now, again, people that didn't attend it, we still can uh, obtain DNA through saliva kits through the mail. So this is, again, is a really novel approach. We will build numbers. We actually will be able to get numbers of merit to actually ask the questions that we want to know the answers to. Um, so we are currently uh, pursuing somewhat of a marketing campaign through social media. So currently we have a private group that uh, people have come to us primarily of what we offer. I offer a, a blog of a sense, but basically as a provider with expertise, I seek out, search, and digest current literature and research articles and provide that back to the patient. And again, it's a way for the patient to feel they have a finger on the pulse of what's happening with autoimmune hepatitis. So through Facebook is a huge way. Twitter is another large one. And we're currently are building the website for the Autoimmune Hepatitis Association. The good thing is now with our research conference and our AIHA, we actually have now generated a large amount of content of over 20 hours of dedicated lectures for this disease. This doesn't exist anywhere else, but uh, what we want is basically when a patient is diagnosed with autoimmune hepatitis, they have in their pocket a webinar to kind of give them the nuts and bolts, ins and outs of the liver, but also all the other associated symptoms that come along with it that include a number of specialties that they may not get anywhere else. So this has been a big uh, critique of our work, particularly if we use this as a way to recruit and also study. What we have found though, we actually have a large population of older females and males that are on our site as far as the demographic. Certainly, uh, and I think we all can see, you know, my grandmother who is 93 is on Facebook. So I think this demographic is shifting and as the baby boomers age, we will see a shift along with it. Facebook, again, is maturing and maturing in terms of its population demographics. So we're going to use that to our advantage. And what we've been doing is word of mouth. Um, and I think with word of mouth, we've gone from zero to 710 members in the course of a year. And this is, again, with just a rare disease. Other ways is, you know, basically providing information that's quality. People start to understand this, and they tell, they tell their friends, they tell their doctors even. So again, in our approach to autoimmune hepatitis, we've kind of gone from a grassroots up. So those patients go back and tell their doctors, their doctors tell their other autoimmune hepatitis patients about these resources. So I think it's, it's we like to think it's ingenious, um, but again, over time, I think we'll only see this snowball even more. 
Our current approach on the autoimmune hepatitis research network is patient driven. However, we have a number of physicians and the ones that are physicians commonly have someone with AIH in their family. We cater to both though and again the information we provide are at, uh, at a number of different levels. Um, so we would always encourage any providers that are interested in learning more about autoimmune hepatitis to come to our site, but also with our public site, the Autoimmune Hepatitis Association, where we actually will have the webinars, including everything from liver disease to endocrine disease to mood disorders, all covered in very short 20 to 30 minute talks that you can click play and just listen to. This is a, a really uh, tough situation because we cannot doctor through Facebook. And a lot of it is essentially people posting what you just said, here's my condition. Unfortunately, I have to say, sorry, I can't really comment on it, but let me provide you these resources. Interestingly, as a physician, as soon as I bowed all the other people in the group, it's very self-governing, chime in. There's many people that act very motherly to the younger patients that give their experience, or when I had that, we did this or even hepatology referrals, which is just amazing. It's been an amazing resource also for me is to watch and see the questions that come up. It's very hypothesis generating. It's essentially a large focus group. And in rare disease, focus groups are huge when you're trying to drive a direction of the disease course. But again, so the ethical standards, again, in providing medical uh, information is, is a little bit gray and a little blurred. But again, I, we, we put this on our website that uh, essentially, you know, we can't comment on your diagnosis. Uh, we can't guide you uh, for what decision making you should have done. But again, what we can provide is the resource for you, the tool for you to learn and go back to your doctor, engage the physician, and actually have a shared decision making model. Because I think this is, this is paramount in this type of disorder.